Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Shirley with Spirit of Matter, and we are after the Libra solar eclipse. And one theme that come comes up is Keterilates, Keter relationships, uh, where the south node is very active in the relationship. And another form of south node relationship, or something that's been carried from past life, can be 12th house synastry overlays, particularly with sun or moon uh, in the 12th house of each other. And I'm going to talk about this type of relations. This is Jupiter day, so we call on uh, Zeus benevolence, genuine benevolence, uh, genuine expansion, optimism. Um, and it's Mercury hour, and Jupiter is in Mercury sign. It is in uh, Gemini, and here in the seventh house for uh, the time of recording, uh, which is a good time to also invite Hermes. And they informed of trickery, but having true teaching. Um, and so we think about Mercury, we think about the lies of Mercury, and how sometimes they're cover up for a situation where the, uh, the liar uh, knows that people can't bear the truth. When you think about Mercury Pisces, for example, um, and, and the wisdom of the oceans that can be both confusing that Pisces have and the awareness that uh, the other party might not be uh, able to hear the truth. So, so you lie. And this is very much the Gemini archetype. Um, and that comes in with the episode that deals with the 12th house. So, 12th house synastries um, are something that a lot of astrologers warn us from. Uh, because this is the house of the unseen. Okay, It's, it's your hidden spot. Um, however, uh, another perspective I had, uh, particularly from Lada Dunceva, on 12th house and 12th house charity is where this is a house where we can feel compelled to give unconditionally. So this is a house where we can get both closest to the ideal of unconditional love or fall into, fall into grand illusions um, and ego, egotistical illusions, but it's not direct, okay? There's some complexes, there's some things that are really hidden. Uh, so if I take, for example, 8th house versus 12th house, what's in the 8th house? It's that stuff we've been swiping under the rug, okay? Uh, and then the eighth house person comes and uh, if they have a synastry overlay, they shine a light on that in whichever with whichever planet or outer planet uh, they do. And then something sparks a reaction. Okay, and I can think of uh, me tending to satanic ritual abuse of children being sparked up by questions about when will they have children? Or why don't you make your own income and so on and so forth and how that all connected to uh, satanic ritual abuse and the blockade around whether it's marriages or satisfaction or intimacy uh, or even uh, saving money um, or going to work okay for, for what that money does or what the taxation does and so on and so forth so that was uh, one Pluto in my eighth house uh, creating revolution, uh, both in my uh, uh, credit cards or credit score, but also that was one Pluto creating a revolution where I exposed the hidden, where I tend to the hidden. So this is not stuff that you didn't know, but you've been swept under the rug. We're not making all the connections. Twelfth house is what you didn't know you didn't know. It's, hey, I feel that. I don't even know where it's coming from. What's that to do with anything? And that can be a dream state. That can be energy. Okay, there's something coming up around something. If I can give example of when I was in therapy and I felt uh, uh, energy of United States coming from my therapist and I didn't know how to interpret it. It had to do with academic structure and so on. Um, so I didn't know. And apparently he was MK Ultra. Okay, so... <laughs> But he also brought information about satanic ritual abuse, and they talked about it in other uh, places. And so, 
uh, the twelfth house, unlike the eighth house, is what we really didn't know. We didn't know. Okay, it's not something that's been lying in our consciousness, and we've swiped it under the rug. We don't really know what to do with that. Okay, if I take uh, the role of, for example, uh, uh, why am I not having children? Well, there's just so many things related to the medical state of how they treat fertility, um, uh, to have a relationship with someone who have shared assets, it's eighth house. Um, I've worked for, for, for a credit card company before, like I've seen the lies. Uh, and for, why don't you okay work or want to work? Uh, it's like, yeah, but that, that's the same, okay? All of these issues coming up at work, I don't feel belonging at work. My, uh, I want to die at work very literally, and so if I want to choose life, I have to get out of the environment that makes me to choose not life. And then my money goes out for the, whether it's saving or whatnot, um, and, and that's just perpetuating the very satanic abuse that would keep me from having satisfying life. Okay, That's something that's been swiped under the rug. It's like, hey, I can't deal with that. Okay, fuck that. Fuck that. Okay. Uh, and then the eight house persona comes in and forces you. And then you can have this guy like, you know what? Let's end the satanic ritual abuse. Let's see how you, mister, are invested in satanic ritual abuse. Let's see how all your work, let's see how all your cult defines which will regulate which profession and so on and so forth. It's, you can um, begin to have a drive where you actually tend to things and they can actually transform stuff. Uh, whereas the 12th house, there's a certain sort of a deep sleep and that deep sleep is not a, a deep sleep and conscious sleep of lack of awareness but is the water pre-creation water the pre-creation of water and that can be very fertile combination be around hidden wealth uh, or even secret relationships where you think about the uh, dynamic with the 12th house person is dynamic where Unconditional giving is required. This is also the house of the bedroom. If you think about what makes for great sexual experience is when you have the give and give. You also have to be able to receive, yes, but it's the give and give where you give unconditional. Both people not afraid to give unconditionally, then they actually have willing consent when you think about this. Um, and so... Uh, again, we think about the, the eighth house is the house of union uh, in, in spirit and in matter, okay, in your ancestral lineage as well. So this is the house where people say, oh, this betrayal, this, 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 that. It's also house of depth and transformation and facing our past life traumas and doing something about it on a worldly scale. Um, even if hidden or occultistic, uh, it's definitely the house where if somebody in the family has been doing occult in a way that is malefic, uh, the effects on that, on birthing, on conception, on uh, the intimate part of a sexuality is going to show, okay, the death and rebirth. With the 12th house, there's just the thing that you didn't know you didn't know. That affects your life. Okay, but I had no idea if somebody was by proxy uh, doing mind control, satanic ritual abuse only as an infant. It's not even coming from the immediate family. I, I, and, and I don't know exactly for what. Okay, that's that's 12 house stuff. That's stuff that's completely hidden, completely blind spot. And yet the 12th house sinistry overlay can also be a situation where unconditional giving takes place. It has to be from place of unconditional giving um, and being truthful about ourselves. When we can give unconditionally, when we cannot. Um, this also makes you aware for when you're not able to unconditionally give anymore. Okay, it's the house of retreat. So this eclipse also brings in twelfth house relationship overlays and twelfth house sinistries. Um, they could be miraculous healing or could be other things um, where something is um, you're definitely being seen especially with sun and twelve house definitely being seen in a very unexpected way by very unexpected people that seem to come from other worlds but, but you knew each other okay and uh, we don't know what, what plays out Okay, in that situation, 
uh, but there's genuine unconditional giving involved and um and the 12th house person um uh, is being seen in a certain way and there is a lot of unconditional giving to the 12th house sun okay or the 12th house planet this is where you're compelled to give unconditionally and that can be 12th house charity for you where your uh, karma or your um especially right now it's very karma it's very faded relationships and it's not a good or bad thing it's just it's what what's playing out requires you giving that is unconditional in a way um and that can be even a form of 12th house charity where you take on this type of giving and i highly recommend you to work with the fixed star the positive fixed stars of every sign so let's say if it's libra that would be speaker um if it is um uh, let's say aquarius that would be uh, um, then of algidi andromeda constellation if that's aries uh beta per se if this is taurus and so on and so forth because uh, that can uh, help remediating Okay, the Procyon, if it's Cancer or, or even Sirius, uh, that can help remediating for the 12th house karma in a way that is more uh, loving and uh, honoring of boundaries. Um, and that is um, a part of the relationships that are coming right now. Okay. Um, the and the and the the unconditional giving and unconditional giving does not necessarily have to be with a fiscal resources or even time or presence sometimes unconditional giving is letting go even and allowing that person to be um so that or alternatively is being with that person even though so and so and so and so and so okay but a certain requirement for that type of unconditional giving when it comes to the 12th house and so um this is something that perhaps can remediate any sense of betrayal because uh, if, if the betrayal and there's many reasons for betrayal but if the betrayal is because somebody expects someone um to be given back in a, in a way that they cannot okay so let's say they can do with a psychological condition or the privation conditions uh of the psyche and if, like if there is an expectation for this to be something that it cannot be uh, then they can be feeling of being abused or they're given your entire being and so on uh, but and one thing that came around this was i gave my entire being I have my entire being and it's a type of giving you know if you think about when Saturn went into my 12th house uh, I was trying to market my business and usually you're expected to like give gifts or have people on your product and I was like I was so exhausted from the many things I've been tending to that I really didn't feel able to give and I said it to Dana Balgadi and then I was instructed on, on where to steal even uh, where is uh, stealing food or stuff like that that is kind of like appropriate kind of like um, if I had to get something then I could get it from here or from there or steal from here or from there um, in those ways um, which later I would get actually teachings of how to get certain things without the stealing but if I didn't even have the energy to do something um, then that would be uh, the case Whereas the deep rest is required to do something. Okay. And it's so much so that when I was uh, homeless at the time, um, uh, the feeling began to be, it began to be evident that what they need is not work, but rest uh, and even retirement um, and vacation. And that's how I got there. And when I got to my ancestral lineage, uh, especially for my grandmom, 
uh, my grandmom didn't get to travel too much except for when my pa and ma traveled and took her on the road and i guess that was missing she was working all her life she lost her feet to her workplace um and she wasn't unsatisfied with the workplace but it's just something that she was giving so much that she didn't get to travel and from very young age i could not stand on my feet i could walk i could dance but i could not stand on my feet for long times or wait in line when you think about you know my grandfather coming from you know the, the holocaust and my grandmother family escaped and before the holocaust she married when she was very young and i'm 40 and i'm married and never married um so you think about how we are and this is not a lot of teaching that we are the continuation of the karma for grandparents and so um when something is inauthentic to you the 12th house placement will show you that and that could be through loss or even what seems to be like betrayal. Um, for, for example, for 10 years I have a, had a bestie that was supporting me, was supporting me even when I wanted to grow my business and uh, if I needed like to pay for the oils and then they would get, they would get the compensation equal to their investment, but, but that was not why they invested. Okay, they were genuinely giving and I had the Sun and Saturn in my 12th house, um, but their Saturn was squaring my Saturn and so when I was trying to get my business going, it was more out of duty because I have to do something with my life. And while well, they were very supporting, like they, let's say I would want to get a degree or something like that, uh, there's something in there that required a retirement, a traveling, like my grandmama didn't get to travel in, in, in that way that ancestors live in that room, me, uh, that only recently with the completely unexpected sun in my 12th house and then of Algedi sun actually um, energies began to come in from that part of the family and that benevolence of what if I could just travel without owning anything to anyone and have my own experiences without having to work for it without having to yield something as a result of this unexpected benevolence or the the desire that, that, that that's needed and that that's even requested by my ancestors it's somehow for it magically to manifest and so the understanding that the road of growing my business would lead to to, to loss because it's not what is disdained it's not the essence of desire uh, at this point um, and so the, the heartache that comes with not being aligned with my path and constantly thinking about which road of career um, is, is heartbreaking and it made, it's also a hidden, invisible factor that contributed to the eight house traumas, okay, that contributed to well, the type of how I would think about relationships or intimacy or not being authentic to my needs and Pluto's about to enter my 12th house and I have to be authentic to my needs, okay? So if Saturn was like, hey, you would be homeless if you wouldn't take these pills or that pills and, uh, and, and that was how the entire accepting of an identity, okay? It was, it was identity related psychiatric tug that got me my funding for my studies which were to me the closest to a retreat and traveling at the time i didn't go to study to get a profession i marketed it that way but i had to lie to myself and to the world because the essence of desire was something i couldn't fathom and it couldn't it couldn't make sense to me because i was so career oriented and worldly success oriented i have ketu in the 10th house not rahu okay but I'm also not a housewife okay I love children with all my heart I love children uh, but I'm, I'm not a great caregiver I have to say um, and um, and that kind of uh, you know sun in my 12th coming up from nowhere absolutely nowhere not judging me not questioning me not anything uh, and, and this energy that connected me to my ancestors, I don't even know how, but 12th house people can read the energy. 
and and it's not necessarily that they're looking for something it's like you, you know it when you see a person and you are on their blind spot you're on their blind spot and this is where you have planets in their 12th house okay so for example i could see uh, uh if, if when i had uh, a stellium in someone's 12th house i could see well that guy's not monogamous they're not going to be monogamous. They're not monogamous. They're not monogamous. It's not like they're playing it. It's not, they're not monogamous. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I could see the lie that they were living. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it's also not like you can blatantly expose that or blatantly say something because it takes a person time and a deep rest, a deep sleep to be okay with not being judged, with being accepted, with something it's like that thing you didn't even know, it's kind of like the missing link. Uh, and all this happens when I'm doing, you know, what are expensive on cooling the second season, which is about missing things, it's about Neptune. <laughs> so, and Neptune is about to square, okay, my uh, natal charge so this is not even about me being feeling uh, outcast in society because of society but my own inner beliefs that were pinpointing at what the career that i want what are the dreams that i want that they still have a place um but there was this missing link wherever my ancestral lineage has been the path of work overwhelmingly and my grandmother was pretty much the main caregiver okay she was the main breadwinner until my grandfather um, rented his uh, uh, um, a store for when he had business she was the main breadwinner you know <laughs> yeah, the grocery st shop everybody was against him competition or uh, over nothing you know because people can be successful together but I guess that was the niche so she had was the one that had a corporate job and from her job, there was a, a loan that you could they could buy the house and so on. So she was she was the main breadwinner, and, <laughs> and she never got to relax or try different things, which I got in my life. Okay, to try different things, to try open business and do that, or that's what my mother did as well. She never got to relax and just travel, see the world, and that deep desire in me. That was repressed by by fears or by you know many things uh, and even just acceptance that you know well my not how to so and so um, but then it comes to 12 and if I think about how even when I was homeless Saturn was my 12th house I was traveling basically to my fatherland the Netherlands and it, Jupiter was in my first house so there was uh, when at first there was abundance of food and then there was abundance of uh, assistance in teaching me about businesses and where to steal from and uh, like really and, and and again it was stealing food uh, or gloves or something that would keep me warm in the winter something that wasn't in the shelter um but there was the, but every day when they thought they would go close to shelter it began with the bathroom which is also 12th house and the only free bathroom that there was was on the train so i had to not go on the metro which was local but go on the train black travel black um as old as do apparently <laughs> hey, it's very expensive to, to travel so they travel black even to work uh it's very funny um and then they have to gaslight people so it's like yeah i try to do this i try to do that but i was not gaslighting i was just saying but as also homeless, so uh, they are not uh, supposed to uh, charge me, but they were also not supposed to tell me where the bureaucracy where I could get my rights. So, <laughs> so when I was kindly told by the person, because it wasn't lying, it was very important to be, uh, um, you know, to be polite. Um, and when I was, you know, just telling the truth, uh, then they told me, well, I'm not supposed to tell you that, but I'm writing uh, so-and-so, and that means that you can cancel that, uh, which of course I couldn't because they tried to blackmail me to be in bed with someone. <laughs> they actually told me that they have the surname, that their mother was the surname of my 
concerning. <laughs> so, um, but then they say, well, maybe there is one bed if you come for that or the cloth. I say, no, cloth is a herb that you put in tea and it's good against toothache and inflammation. <laughs> okay, there I said it. Um, and so uh, the, the whole scenario was that I was, every time they said we closed the shelter, I was intuited to travel every day and I traveled nearly the entire uh, south of the Netherlands um, in, in this way. It was very cold and I, f I remember I traveled also to north, to the north area of Amsterdam. I was just walking by foot and all this BMWs you there and then a person stops me and she said, well, it's so cold. I say yes, but to travel is more important to go out and to travel. And usually, I'm I'm Venus Sun and Taurus, so I would stay cozy. Okay, I would I would need comfort when I travel. And that time, I could travel in the cold in the winter. It was not freezing cold. It was rather relatively warm summer, uh, uh, summer in the winter because it was not anyway like the minus twenty degrees or stuff you would see usually, which was good for me, very lucky for me actually, uh, but I was insisting on seeing the area or seeing or traveling or going out and it was very difficult, um, but I'm very happy that I got to see as much as I could get to see um, from from the country, which is a very beautiful country, um, but I could not help how it was almost my karma to travel because that was needed to see the world as travel was more important than to work, was more important than even to bring children or be family wise. Uh, more important than everything was um, uh, to travel. And that uh, something that seems unreasonable, okay, in, in today's society uh, or in today's, uh, in this economy or in this world war even. And then the, the internal experience is, is vying for that so much so that it would go and undermine every single endeavor in my life. There is business, work, relationships, sex, even sex. If, if children, if there's expectation from somebody for the sex to lead to children, then of course. Because there is this ancestral lineage, this, this karmic lineage that's coming through me into the situation where um, that deep rest is so important and that accepting and seeing the connections to do with my ancestors is so important because just something is very difficult to justify in reality where you know you're born to working class you're not royalty um, and, and I didn't want it to come off as, well, I, I, I've made so much, I've given so much to the world, and this is be, because it's, it's not, it's, it's side by side. I'm happy with what I've, I gave to the world, and I'm happy to tending to the things that I'm tending to, and the opportunities that I had, uh, and the things that I've done. Um, and that goes not because I've given so much that, I, that I'm entitled to, but because my soul really wants to search to, to travel, to experience was from a benevolent motive um, uh, that was hidden because of even internal fears that I would be unacceptable. And that happened to me at the airport. It was kind of like my pilgrimage. Um, so you think about those 12 house overlays and the unexpected wealth, the unexpected gifts uh, that are even ethereal that you're given of self-acceptance and uh, what's required of you is to give unconditionally but you cannot expect this to necessarily end up in you know married plus children or uh, a commitment or uh, if if the road is such then there are people married that have this uh, synastry overlay but if not it might not and uh, and if the betrayal feelings are from that expectation that it would then Perhaps delving into one's own 12th house, okay, let's say if you were the sun person, you felt so betrayed because you felt like abused and so on, you thought it would lead to a relationship, but it didn't, then go to your 12th house and see who is in your 12th house and begin to see what, what underlying things been happening that you've been desiring so deeply 
that you've been undermining every single thing you did in your life because that missing link was not being answered. So, um, this beginning of the journey and um, and this journey for, for self-acceptance in, in, in essence. It's like, okay, why did that happen to me? Well, that happened to me, that, but it's like, you're not supposed to work that much in this life. Well, how would I get my money? We don't know. But definitely not. You definitely keep undermining yourself because your soul wants to travel and to enjoy and to experience life because you're living the continuation of your ancestors and you keep trying to do things in the real world that are antithetical to where even your chart is going. I was trying to work on my business when Kettle was in my 10th house. And I knew Kettle was in my 10th house. I'm still doing that. Okay? So, yeah. Um, and this is where we can go from telling lies to telling the truth. Telling the truth. Because the, not being able to tell the truth undermines us. Um, and telling the truth is, uh, is, is liberating because it's telling the truth to ourselves that we're not being aware of and that's a part of that um, 12th house journey and the acknowledgement of that which was you know uh, missing uh, and, and the self-acceptance really, that is a part of you that you're just going to have to accept Okay, let's say I have a Libra 8 house. And Libra is so much caring about the physique and aesthetic of something. And that's something I just have to accept. It's just a part of me that it's like that. Okay? I don't like that. But it's like that. Um, and just accept. Okay? That that's a part of your being. With the 12th house, you don't even see that that's a part of your being. With the 12th house, it's... Um, you don't even know. Because it's ancestors. The ancestors. It's something that's really, really hidden... Um, it's also to do with uh, uh, our mental health. Okay, so why? If, you, if you're satisfied, you're depressed, or you have family, we have work, we have so much things, but you're depressed. Why are you depressed? Okay? Why are you not sleeping well? What is missing in your life for that deep sleep? And when that deep sleep arrives, you don't question it. It is so because it's meant to be so, and that's it slept well tonight and there's some person some being in the energy and you slept well tonight then that's that's a good night's sleep you have with someone okay that that's and you and you can't question it let it unfold and we'll see for how the things to seem the most unreasonable makes perfect sense to your lineage and to your ancestry and to what you've been coming to do in this world uh, so I hope you have uh, a pleasant time with this Libra Eclipse and uh, adding now the, uh, the 12th house overlays to the uh, possibility of Keto relations um, might make more sense to many of you and I hope you can uh, overcome the bridge of feeling you know betrayed when uh, or expecting something and rediscovery of the true essence of yourself, so you're not betrayed anymore, um, but rather you you know what you're expecting, or you know what what you what can, they can be expecting from you, and where you stand, you can have more authentic, um, deeper connections, and a better sleep, and better mental health, and better life in the bedroom, perhaps. So, um, yes, thank you for watching.